Welcome to this lesson guys where we will be going over rearranging formula. Now in this particular lesson I am going to be going over some simple basic uh, rearranging of formula just to get you used to the idea and then later on um, in the next lesson we are going to be looking at more harder examples the sort of grade 7 the grade 8 even types of questions. So stay tuned. <music> Right, so let's begin with our first question. A question in an exam may say to you something like, make y the subject of the formula. It wants you to rearrange the formula that you're given and make something else the subject. What do we mean by the subject? You see here, um, x is equal to 3y minus 2. x is currently the subject of this formula. So we want to have y in that place. Now, a common mistake that I see some students make often is that they think that they can just swap where x and y is and just swap them around. So they put y there and they put, impose x in there and they think they've done it. That is wrong, that's incorrect. You've got to follow the proper steps to make y the subject of your formula. Now I'm going to be showing you two different ways. The first method uses sort of function machines. I call it the flowchart method. Um, you, could, you might have given it another name, but it's simply looking at the function of what happens each step um, in each step and going backwards and finding um, the reverse procedure. So let's begin. So once again, we have x is equal to 3y minus 2 and we want to make y our subject. So I'm going to start off with the function machine method. Um, so let's look at y. What's happening to y? You see, the first thing that's happening to y is being multiplied by 3 and then minus 2. And that gives us x. So let, if you write this down, let's start with y. The first thing that happens is multiply by 3 and then you minus 2. And that gives us the x. Now, if we were to work backwards, so instead of minus 2, going backwards would be to add 2. Instead of times by 3, going backwards would be to divide by 3. So what would that look like now? x plus 2. Let's write that down. x plus 2. Having done x plus 2, we now need to divide by 3. Now, we divide the whole thing, whatever we have, by 3. So divide by 3 will look like that. And that will give us y. So let's write that. y is equal to that. And this is a very, very straightforward method. Um, often I teach this to the middle ability students, but the higher end students also, uh, when they learn this, they appreciate what's going on in each step and they like to know what's going on in each step and it helps them. So they end up using it as well. I will show you the method that um, may be quicker and maybe more conventional. Um, as well, and majority of you may be more used to that. So this method is as follows. What you do is you do the reverse operation each time, but you don't really write this in this uh, flowchart or this function method. Okay, so you look at x is equal to, let's write this down again, x is equal to 3y minus 2. And you want y, you want to isolate y, you want y on its own. So you want to get rid of everything around it. So the first thing um, that's closest to the y is the 3, so we're going to do that last. We're going to take away everything else around y first, which is this minus 2. Now, you can think of this in two ways. You can either think of, if I want to get rid of a minus 2, I will add 2 here. Now, if you add 2 here, you've got to add 2 here as well. Okay, so we'll add 2 to both sides. We'll add 2 here, and we'll add, let me write that properly, and we'll add 2 there. Or you could think of it as, you're taking this over to the other side. Now, if you take something to over to the other side, the sign changes, you have the opposite sign. So here, you've got a minus two. When you take it over to this side, it will be a plus two. So what ends up happening, whichever way you think of it, whether you're adding two or you're taking something over to the other side, you still end up getting x plus two on this side. And here, you're just left with 3y. So you've just got 3y. Now, what do you do next? You want to do the opposite of multiplying by 3. So you're going to either divide by 3, both sides, or you can think of it as taking 3 to the other side. To take 3 to the other side, you do the opposite operation of multiplying, which is divide by 3. So you end up with x plus 2 divided by 3, and there you have it, y is on its own. And it doesn't matter which way around you write it, so you could still change this to look like that. So y on this side and that on this side. Um, x plus 2 over 3. You haven't actually taken the y over to this side and made it into a negative and this over to this side to make that into a negative. You've just switched the way they're written. 
Let's have a look at these next two examples. Now, the examples that I have planned for you in this lesson will each graduate each time. Okay, there will be something different about it so that you are prepared in all types of different circumstances in an exam paper that you may be facing in the future. So, let's have a look at this first one. We want to make P the subject and we have M is equal to 5N plus 2P. Now, I will do, keep doing the two methods for a while um, and then I'll just go with one method. Whichever method that you like, whichever method you prefer, you use that, okay? Um, as long as you are comfortable and you come to the correct answers. So, let's have a look at this one. We want to make P the subject of our formula. We currently have M is equal to 5N plus 2P. Now, because we are making P become our subject of our formula, we want to isolate what P is, we will start with P and following the rules of bod mass or bid mass as they are called as well, um, we will start with the multiplying first, okay? So multiply by 2 is first rather than adding 5N, okay? It's because we are following the rules of bod mass, which is brackets, indices, division and multiplication, addition and subtraction. Okay, look that up. I'll have a separate video for that if you need a refresher on bod mass or bid mass. So now we will add our next step, which is the 5n. Now what's happening here? It looks as though it's 5n plus 2p. That 2p has been added to 5n, which it is. But it's the same as writing 2p plus 5n. That, I could have given you the equation like that as well. Okay, so times by 2 plus 5n. So we can write the whole plus 5n like that. And that gives us M. Now we want to work backwards. We want to find what's happening to M now. So M minus 5N is the opposite of plus 5N. Times by 2, divide by 2. So we end up with M minus 5N. Let's write that. M minus 5N. And then divide the whole thing by 2. And that is equal to P. And so we have it. P is now the subject of our formula. I will show you this again using the more conventional method. So where we add and take something to the other side or this to the, that side. So we have, let's start with this. So M is equal to 5N plus 2P. So we want to get rid of the 5N first. So what we'll do is we will minus 5N from both sides. That gives us M minus 5N here. And when we minus 5N from here, we just left with 2P. So we have 2P. Next, we want to get rid of the 2, so we'll divide by 2, both sides. So if we divide this side by 2, we get m minus 5n over 2. And when we divide this side by 2, we're just left with p, because the 2's divided by 2 will cancel. So there you have it. p is now the subject. And you could write p equals first, and then m minus 5n over 2 on this side. Hopefully you've understood that. Um, try the next one yourselves. Um, follow the operation if that helps you um, to understand it and press play when you are ready to go for it. So let's have a look at this one now. So we want to make n the subject. We have m is equal to n squared plus 3. So let's start with our n. What's happening to our n? n is being squared. It's being powered by 2. Now I'll just write this like that. To the power of 2. Then what's happening? We add in 3. And that gives us m. Let's work backwards. So, opposite of plus 3, minus 3. What is the opposite of powering by 2? It is square rooting. So, we will square root. Oops, not 2 here. 2 can go there, if you like. You don't need that 2 there, but I just want to show you. Sometimes if it's to the power of 3, you're going to do the cube root. If it's to the power of 4, you're going to do the fourth root, like that. So, we have m minus 3. And then we now need to square root what we have. To square root, we write a square root sign above all of that. And that is equal to n. And there we have it. n is our subject. I will show you this, of course, using the traditional method. So let's do that over here. So we have m is equal to n squared plus 3. Hopefully that's not too small for you to see on the screen. Um, so what will we do first? We want to get rid of the plus 3, so we'll do minus 3 both sides. That will become m minus 3, left with n squared on this side. And now the opposite of, uh, we want n, we don't want n squared, so we'll square root. Let's just write this here. We'll square root both sides, so m minus 3, square root that. And when we square root this, the square and the square root, they cancel each other out. 
and you're just left with n. And there you have it, n is the subject, and both ways are the same answer. Have a look at this one. Um, I want to try to make sure, like I said, have every circumstance as, as, as possible covered. All right. So here we have, we want to make b the subject of this formula. We have a is equal to the square root of b plus 2 over 5. Right. Now, I will just employ one method on this one. Um, so I'll just go with what I've done the second time, the second method on each of the questions so far. So I want to make b the subject, b plus 2 over 5, and then all of that is square rooted. So the last thing that's happening is that it's been square rooted. So how do I get rid of that square root first? Um, I will power it, I will square it, so to the power of 2. So that will become a squared. Powering all of this to the power of 2 will cancel out the square root, so I'll be left with b plus 2 over 5. This is a very, very important step. Please understand this. What do you do next? Do you take away the 2 or do you multiply by 5? Well, just read to yourself again what b's position is. It's b plus 2 over 5, not b over 5 plus 2. It's b plus 2 over 5. 5 is the last thing you do and the first thing you need to get rid of now. So dividing by 5, we will multiply by 5, both sides. So that will give us 5 times a squared. So 5a squared is equal to b plus 2. We've got rid of that, 5. Um, next, we want to get rid of the plus 2, so we will take away 2. So take the 2 to the other side, that will give us 5a squared minus 2, and b is on its own. b is now the subject. Right, so now onto this question, we've got um, y is equal to 2 over 5x minus 12, and we want to make x our subject. Have a go yourself maybe, press pause here, and press play when you are ready. So we have y is equal to 2 over 5x minus 12, We'll do this part last, we need to anyway. Uh, we want to get rid of the minus 12. So to get rid of minus 12, we will add 12 to both sides. So that will give us y plus 12 here, and we are left with on this side, 2 over 5x. Once again, what do we get rid of first? The 2 that is multiplying with the x, or the divide by 5? If you want to rewrite this another way, just to understand this better, this is also rewritten as this, if you had y plus 12 is equal to that, you know that you'll be multiplying by 5 first to get rid of that 5 and then divide by 2. So going back to this one now, we'll times by 5. When you times by 5, remember you're times multiplying the entire thing here, so you put this into a bracket, y plus 12 in a bracket. Please don't just multiply the 5 with the y only. The students make that mistake. So you're going to multiply with the y, then multiply it with the 12 as well, okay? But you could just leave it like this. And then what's left here? Just 2x, because the 5 has gone. Now you are going to divide by 2 to get rid of that 2. Sorry, I forgot to write that step here, times by 5, just for your records, if you are following that, okay? Right, so now we are going to divide by 2. We're going to divide the entire thing here by 2. So we have 5 bracket y plus 12 over 2, and that equals x. You don't need to expand this out um, because you've made x the subject. And that's all that the question is requiring you to do. Right, so let's have a look at this one here. We want to make a the subject, and we've got x is equal to 3 bracket a plus 9. That's a 9. It, it does look a bit similar to my a, uh, just in case you're wondering. Now, you've got uh, two options here. You can either choose to divide by 3 first, or you can expand the bracket. Now, because I haven't shown you an expansion of brackets, I am going to expand the bracket with you on this one. So, if we expand the bracket, we get 3 times a, which is 3a, and 3 times 9, which is 27. And we want to make a the subject, so we want to get rid of the 27 first, so let's take the 27 over here, that will be x minus 27. So we are minusing 27 from both sides. And that leaves us with 3a on, to, on this side. And finally, we are going to divide by the 3, because we want to get rid of that 3, so we have x minus 27, over 3 is equal to a. Now, um, earlier on, when we expanded, uh, we came to this answer. If we didn't expand, and we came to an answer, and if you've done that at home, you may have noticed that they, you get a different answer. The reason for that is, if you can split this up, so x 
over 3 minus 27 over 3 equals a. Um, you can split it up like that, the fraction. Um, you get x over 3, and this, 27 over 3, simplifies to minus 9, like that. And that makes a our subject, but we have x over 3 minus 9. And I'm just going to show you that um, as well, just to confirm it with you. Okay, so uh, this time I am not going to exp uh, expand the bracket. I'm going to divide by 3 first. Let's write that down one more time. So x is equal to 3 bracket a plus 9. So I'm going to divide by 3. So x over 3, and I have a plus 9 on this side. And then I'm going to take 9 over to this side. So x over 3 minus 9 is equal to a. And there you have the same answer. And you're probably also wondering, ah, oh, that was quicker. Like I said, whatever way you want to use, that's totally up to you. I've shown you both methods. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson, guys, and you now have a good grasp of how to rearrange algebraic formula. Um, in the next video, I will be going over a great GCSE grade 7 types of questions, so stay tuned for that one, and I'll see you in the next video.